Hey everybody, my name is James Barlidge. This right here is going hard in the paint. Where today, episode three, baby, we're gonna show you how to paint a nice mid-ground in some water. Everybody loves mid-grounds. Everybody loves water. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's go. I'm sweating. I'm gonna wipe the sweat off my face. Oh. First things first, before we start painting our mid-ground, I'm going to put some water in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that same brush, two-inch brush that we've been using, I'm going to get some white. I'm going to lay this white right here. I'm going to lay it on pretty, pretty, pretty thick, get it all up in my brush. I didn't want to use this because I want it to be more blue, so I'm going to grab some blue, put in there, get it nice and bluey we don't want it too blue like straight out of the tube because nothing's gonna nothing's gonna blend down here it's not going to turn lighter in value because this right here is a dry canvas i do this because i want my canvas as dry as possible i want to build as many layers as possible when i paint this water in i'm going to want reflections and i'm going to want some some light tinkling on the top of the water so that's why i do that i know it's probably a little different than what you're used to but that's what we're going to do so now that i got this in my mid ground's going to go here so i don't have to go all the way up but i want my bluest part to be back here so we're going to want to go straight across like this straight across like that it just, it just takes a little time here, but we'll get her done. All right. Since that's closer, we'll have to have bigger trees that have maybe a little more, uh, a little more detail in them. Maybe we'll detail them out a little bit more. Who knows? I know, because I just told you. <laughs> oh yeah, fade that purpley note in. Maybe put it up in there. Uh, let's see. Our trees are going to come out to about. Let's do one more. Let's do one more, maybe somewhere in between those. Uh, let's make him a little taller. right right see how it looks like it's going back into the distance go up here to my more of my original here and we'll just kind of go right in maybe less detail back here i know you're gonna see this and think man there's a whole episode just for like just for mid-ground stuff and water and yeah, because I mean, this stuff to do it right kind of takes time. I just add a little green into, into my stuff here. And I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not too worried about these, you know. This, this doesn't have to have a lot of detail in it. But one thing I am going to do, so I'm going to put a line there. <clears throat> We're going to put maybe a little more blue into this make it a little more green go back maybe even a little more yellow green it up so we're just trying to we're just trying to uh make our colors different that's all that's all tell you what maybe a little more brown and black Mix that in. I'm sorry, I'm not showing you my palette because it doesn't. This doesn't matter as long as your colors are different each time. And maybe here we'll have. Maybe this is closer, you know. Maybe, maybe so. Maybe it's not. Maybe these trees are just bigger. <laughs>
See that? Oh. And then this. Very important that this right here is just umber and black. Because these are going to be rocks, right? So I got one rock shape there. One rock shape there. And one rock shape there. And it don't matter that your shapes are the same as mine. It just matters that uh, your edges are short, really. Now I'm going to wipe that off. And I'm going to come back and get some of that paint that I put on there off. And then put it back on, baby. Just fill that all in. Painting in rocks, man, ain't nothing more fun. Main thing is you just gotta fill in all those canvas holes. And also, speaking of canvas hole, that would be a great name to call somebody. Somebody kind of pitching you off at work or whatever, you can just call them a canvas hole. They won't know what to do. They'll just look at you like a deer in the headlights in shock because you just called them a canvas hole. So there's that. showed you how to put the medium on how to put your clouds on how to do your mountain how to set up your water your mid ground and kind of your foreground elements getting it ready to prep 
to do uh, to, to finish her up. So uh, let's go, man. What we're going to do here, we're going to grab some dark color, some black, some umber, some green. That's a bug right there. We're going to mix him right in. Some green. Mix that up. Uh, I want a little yellow. Maybe we'll put some ochre in it because we don't want... We want this dark, okay? I think that is good right there. I don't need it all clogged up in my brush like that, so we'll, we'll do this. Now, when I put these, we're gonna do some, we're gonna do evergreens, and when I do this, I want them to come down like this, because the main focal point of the painting is, yeah, the clouds are nice, and that can be a focal point, but like the mountains are, are really what, what are going to draw people to this painting because people for whatever reason love mountains in, in oil paintings i love mountains in oil paintings uh, i do even though lately i've been on you know more of a kick with uh with creeks and such but so we're gonna lay this out oh that's where my first one's gonna be there uh, that is where my second one's gonna be there I like that and I like that and I think we'll do three on the other side we'll do one big and like that we'll do one we'll, we'll do kind of a wonky one like this that comes in yeah and then we'll do a little guy I told you we was gonna lose that tree I don't know if you've seen the other episode but I told you we was gonna lose that one and you know what you know what? Yeah, that we'll just keep it there. I'll keep it simple. We'll keep it simple. We'll keep it simple. We'll keep it simple. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I everything in me tells me to do another one, but we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I know a, a lot of people are taught to to do these fan brush and come to the corner like that and do the z pattern like bob did it but i'm gonna show you a different way that that i'm sure bob did it because you know what when you paint you don't have to paint just like bob uh, bob i don't think ever intended for us to paint just like him i think that he wanted to give us the building blocks that we need to, to do you. I think that one thing that Bob taught me when I was a kid that it was okay to be me. It was okay to be a hundred percent unapologetically me. But we're still going to follow that same principle. We're going to take and kind of do a Z pattern like we did down here. We're going we're going to do a Z pattern here. You know we're going but we're going to keep it in. We're going to keep it tight because there's kind of more to the process when you do it this way. See, just real, real simple, you know, break it up some. That one kind of goes off the page there, don't it? Off the, off the canvas. And I think, I think I'm going to keep these ones back here because I'm going to do something different on that foreground element there now just again maybe he misses a spot there maybe 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 he goes down now we're gonna have to make this paint thick to go through this mountain here so i'm gonna glob it on kind of to go through the mountain oh yeah
this is the most important part of this process. We're gonna take, instead of thinning our paint, we are gonna take this and get rid of some paint, kind of like we did with the mountain. We're gonna blot this here, get some of that excess paint off and blot that. And I am gonna just blot around the mountain, around the snow on the mountain, because I don't wanna lay a paper towel over that. But over this stuff here, I'm going to put a paper towel down to soak up some of that oil. Got to soak that oil up so that we can put more layers on it. And then the paper towel also kind of makes kind of cool. I know I'm in your way there, but it makes kind of cool textures. And over here as well, take that. Kind of do that, soak some of that stuff up. Blot it, blot it, blot it. Then, I just missed my trash can. Then we can take this, stick it on up there. Boom. And if it falls off, that means you've done a good job that, that from keeping a bunch of paint up there. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to go into that thick paint. Maybe I'll even tear that down some more. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go there. And there, because I don't want to mess up my cloud, and I don't want to mess up my mountain. So I'll stay over some. Which, if you do, we can work that out. We got it. We really do. So I'm just going to rub it there. I'm not going to try to rub it where my water is. Just rub that there. Oh, yeah. And one more over here. Put this one right here. Like that. And try not to... Try not to let it move. You do not want to let it move. Then right there. You don't want to let it slide, I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right, now we're going to let this set like this for about five to ten minutes and then we're going to come back pull it off and i will show you how to finish this painting and i pull one off you can see all that excess oil that's been on there i'm just going to set these right on top of uh my my paper towel that i was using to wipe my brushes off with because you can save these and wipe your brushes on them do whatever see all that oil See all that oil there? I'm going to save that one because it's the smallest one. See, you can see the happy little trees right there. The happy little trees imprint. Now, over here where these rocks are, that's still real thick paint. So I'm just going to push down like that. See all that paint I got off of that rock? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me find a drier spot here. Push down. And it's important that you keep this stationary because if you slide, it's going to smear your paint. And that's no bueno. There you go. See those rocks? Booyah. I about fell over. Did you see that? Okay. Oh, I see another spot here. I see another spot right here. Where I got some thick paint, so I'm going to rub it and get that paint off. I'm going to get all that paint off right there. You know what I'm saying? Booyah. Look at all that excess paint. That would have been in your highlight collar had you not rubbed it off. Sometimes, sometimes, you just got to rub one off. So, anyway, 
This is a this is a family show. Anyway, so I uh, I'm gonna get me a new a new round brush here. I'm gonna take some white. Don't matter if it has a little blue in there. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna take a big old gob of yellow. And mix it up. See that right there? Boom, mix it up. I'm gonna get some more white actually. And I'm gonna make one side of my pile lighter than the other side. Once again, just like when we painted the clouds, I mean, that's more paint than this brush. And so our light, as you can see from the clouds, our light's coming this way. So I'm going to start outside, the, outside of the tree collar. And I'm going to tap like that like that tap 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 because we want that to be the lightest and the purest color see I didn't do down here too much because maybe that's blocked by the uh Maybe that's blocked by this tree. And just keep right along here. Filbert brush that we used to do all this with. And I'm going to wipe it out. We don't need it perfect. We just need to get some of that paint out of it. So we don't muddy up the color too much. See, it's still got some of that some of that uh some of that color whatever that was in it and we're counting on that because we're going to take some cad yellow Ooh, not right there up here take some cad yellow some yellow ochre i would say probably 75 percent yellow ochre and muddy it down with that color Wipe the brush out a little bit, just so there's not globs and globs and globs of paint on it. And then we're going to beat the bristles into that color. Like that and spread those bristles apart. And then we're going to pick out some of these trees back here. Like this. And put a little bit of highlight. Actually, I'm going to lighten that up a lot. I muddied too much. There we go. And we'll just tap some of that on there. See that? It's real subtle. Real subtle, but I kind of skipped around some. I should I should have done this first. But that's how I paint. I like I like skipping around and Skippity doo dah beep 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 wow. Then I'm gonna take that color and add some more cad yellow to it over here. Make it kind of brighter. Maybe put a little sap green in it. Oh, I like that. Maybe over here we'll add some some of that some of that kind of highlight to those. You can, uh, as long as you have enough paint on your brush, if it's too small to tap, you can kind of pull and lift like that. Get some of those things going. Maybe we'll change the flavor over here a little bit. See that? 
We had a little pick out a few bushes, put a little more cad yellow. Pick out a few bushes. And tap the edges like that. And then come back and soften. And because of that dark color underneath, it'll uh, it'll it'll mix that dark color underneath and fade as you go back. Just like that. See right there. Oh yeah. I like that. And then over here, same thing. Same thing. Maybe some, wipe your brush out a little on your palette, because that's what we do. Maybe more yellow ochre there. Just change it up. Maybe, uh, maybe even back there we'll go. Yellow ochre. Add some stuff going on back in there. Back in there. Because... That deserves some highlights too, you know? Maybe go a little more cad yellow. Maybe take a little more cad yellow into that yellow ochre right there to brighten it up some. Okay, now we're gonna take all that same old trunk color we used earlier. If you don't have it, it was just yellow ochre, brown, white. We're gonna put some more yellow ochre into it. Because this for the rocks takes it takes a lot of paint. Some more yellow ochre into it. And some cad yellow to brighten it up. And this makes a perfect rock highlight color. Once again, one of those deals more paint than brush. We're gonna take, we're gonna start highlighting our rocks. Over. That was kind of neat, although I didn't intend for that to happen. I'm just reloading and I'm mixing actually that, that brown into the palette of color as I go to make it uh Let's make it darker for this side. Some brown. Go down here. So I want this to be darker. Right? So I laid that down. Now we're going to come back here, just fade that in, fade all that in, fade it in. Just reloading with that darker color. three-quarter brush three-quarter brush into some white that has that phthalo blue or Prussian blue I'm sorry I don't know where that came from go up here line this off line that off like that keep going it's okay if your white gets a little, little muddy. And then 
here. It's important to keep your brush straight when you're doing this. Straight, straight, straight. Straight like that. And then, now that you've picked up a little bit of that dark color, come here, take that white, smear out the brightness. Yeah. Smear out some of that brightness and maybe straighten it up where I told you to do it straight, but I didn't, so just reloading, reloading. Go back, but over this sh uh over this reflection you don't want to pull that down into the blue so when you're doing this just stay in the reflected parts like maybe you could come down here and do this see because that's what happens right there go into the reflected parts maybe reload go into these reflected parts real quick boom boom Got a little reload and do this. Boom, boom. Oh, that's a little much, but that's okay. That's okay. All right. Get back up here maybe a little bit. You don't want too much of this detail back here, though. You really don't, because this is supposed to be further away. Won't be able to see it. Okay. Now... Uh, well, we can do this real quick. Do that, do that, do that. We're going to take some refined linseed oil. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to go and put a few drops into this yellow mixture up here. Boop. But you don't want to do this stuff until you're done with everything else. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You just don't, because if you notice, I didn't thin any of my paint in any of this. I don't thin any of my paint till the end. That's the way I like to do it. Might not be the way you like to do it. It's the way I like to do it, and that's the way I'm doing it, man. Get off me, bro. It's the way I'm doing it. I'm thinning this down. Oof, that's like way down. Just put so much in there, you ain't going to be able to use your palette anymore today. That's what I want you to do. And then we're going to get... I'm, I'm still... I'm going to be brave. I'm still going to hold my palette. And then we're going we're gonna to make some grassage. Like this. We're going to make that a little more green because that's bright. That is bright. That is bright. That is bright. Ooh, let me run some of that back there. There we go. Let's see what I got going on here. That'll actually work out, but... Oh, yeah, I like that. That's why we laid this other color down, though. I laid that color underneath just so this would have some background color, really. There we go. And uh, I'm just I'm just doing these little motions here. You know, down here. I'm a little more careful at the bottom than I am up there because I don't want to uh, put grass where there's no land, mainly. Go. And we'll take and break that up some. That I'm even going to try to intentionally take it and go over that bright yellow to cover it up. And you see how we're building some grass, man. We're building some grass. Right there and right there. If you notice, I've used zero paint thinner through this whole thing. You might be asking yourself, hey, Mr. Barlich, you're oil painting. 
don't you have to use odorless paint thinner to oil paint? And I will tell you, my friend, that the answer is no. You do not have to use paint thinner or mineral, mineral. You don't have to use paint thinner or mineral spirits or odorless mineral spirits or whatever kind of spirits you got to summon to oil paint. You don't have to do that, my friend. And I'm going to show you a different way. I really am going to show you a different way. Where you don't ever, you don't even have to clean your brushes with them. I just made my collar a little darker. And I'm going back up here and adding a little bit of dark. Adding some darkage. Adding some darkage. Hey, listen. I appreciate you tuning in. Helping me paint this. I hope you paint one. I hope yours is twice as great as this. I hope that yours is freaking awesome. I hope you're awesome. I hope you enjoyed my painting and my little series here. I hope you come back and, and continue watching. Listen, smash that like button. Subscribe. Share this with your friends. You know that you love it. You know they're going to love it. Just do it, baby. Come back and paint with me. Let's go. Until next time. Woo!